Oh yeah. Welcome everybody back to my channel. It's Lorene and this is my channel Lorene's Bits and Pieces. Oh, so happy to have you along with us today. We are going to be cooking these little suckers today. Lamb shanks. I am so excited for lamb shanks. It's cold here in the great South Australia and because it's now winter and lamb shanks is one of those things that probably at this time of year the meat is not overly cheap but it's so delicious and warm and soothing and the best way to do it is in the slow cooker so without further ado let's get busy okay so time for a hint how do you know when your pan is nice and hot? Now this is really particularly relevant for people like me who's working with an electric cooktop in that it's like, okay, I can feel that there's a bit of warmth there, but how do I know that it's gonna be not too hot, not too cold, it's sort of sizzling, that sort of sizzling hot because what we've got to do first is to brown the outside of these lamb shanks. What you do is you get a little bit of water in your hand and you flick it onto the pan and you can hear the sizzle. That's how I know that the pan is actually hot enough for me to do this next part. So you get that little And don't forget with your lamb shanks to take the little plastic caps off. Otherwise, you could end up in a bit of an awkward situation. Okay, so you can see that they're pretty much brown um, in most places. I've made sure I got the ends of the meat so that it is no longer um, real pinky. It's got that sort of brownie tint to them. And yes, there's still some spots there that haven't been hit by the heat, but that's okay. This is just about sealing in the majority of that flavor, giving it a bit of extra depth to the flavors as well. Can you get away with not browning the meat? Absolutely, absolutely you can. But this just adds another lovely depth of flavor. So while the lamb shanks are cooking and browning on the outside there, what you do is you get your vegetables ready. So we have some potatoes. We have about five medium potatoes for these four lamb shanks. And we also have a couple of onions. Uh, <laughs> we also have a couple of carrots and an onion, or one and a half onions, as the case may be. So I've got half an onion left from a meal that my partner made yesterday. So all of that will be getting cut up and popped into the slow cooker at the bottom of the slow cooker. So let's get on to and do that now. Okay, and now we get the fun part happening. We've got to put the meat in here and then we'll get on to the sauces. Okay, so this is the point where you get to go and be as adventurous as you like. Today I am going to put some tikka masala in there. It's got a nice little spice cap on the top of it, so I know it's going to be quite spicy. That on its own, you just pour it over the top, chuck it in, no problems. And that on its own will be just plenty of flavor and you don't need to put any extra water, no nothing. If you are a little bit paranoid about how much water is in there or not in there because of the vegetables at the bottom, you're more than welcome to put maybe half a cup of water in there, but no more than half a cup. The other thing that I'm going to be adding to this lovely mix today is this one with garlic and rosemary 
herbs in there. Could I have just added some garlic and herbs and uh, rosemary myself? Absolutely, but I don't have a rosemary bush outside. So I thought, well, let's just chuck those two things together. I think that's gonna be a really nice, nice mix. The um, tikka masala, of course, is a sweet curry, a sweet tomato curry paste. So that with a warming blend of mild spices, and I thought, well, gosh, what a fabulous combination these two flavors will be, given that it's such a freezing cold day, and I'm looking forward. We're looking forward to having some friends over for dinner. So let's pop these two together and put them into the mix, just pouring it over top of the shanks and letting them cook for about six hours. Hey, uh, it's Lorene from the future here. Please put it in first thing in the morning, you know, before you go to work or something like that and just let it sit all day. Um, then you'll get that falling off the bone lamb shanks that we all love. <laughs> all right. So every time I say six hours, it's all day. We're going to go long and slow on this one. Okay. Okay. So as I said, I'm going to mix these powders in with the sauce first. See, because we've had an extra packet of stuff in there, I am actually going to put um, about half half a jar of water and that will help to get the last little bits of in the in there out as well because you can see the thickness of this it's very very thick okay which is not a problem because you'll actually be surprised at how much uh, fluid comes out of the veggies and the meat and the steam and all of that but let's just give it an extra little bit of a helping hand that way we get to clean the jar before it goes out to the recycling. There we go. Have a little sniff. Oh, that smells great. Oh, that's going to be awesome. Alright, so the sauce is now done. We've got our slow cooker here ready to go with our meat and all we do is just cover the meat fully. Don't need to be too pedantic about it, but cover the meat fully in the sauce. Try not to get it up the sides too much because the sides will burn. And it's not so much about changing the flavor of the meat inside, it's more about ease with cleaning. <laughs> We can separate these meat just a little bit to let that sauce dribble down in between. Depending on the size of your slow cooker, of course, will depend on how many pieces of meat you can put in there. So the flavors of the sauce will go into those meats as they cook, kind of like basting it. And then it also drizzles down into the vegetables below and creates a really beautiful flavor, aroma going on in there. Okay, so now we pop it on to low and we will leave it there for about six hours. And so it'll be nice and ready for our dinner tonight. And then of course, don't forget to put the lid on. And today's cup of tea break is proudly brought to us by Red Seal, not sponsored by, but proudly brought. And the flavor is blood orange. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I just love the smell of the warm fruity teas. And the great thing about this particular brand is that you can have them hot or cold. How nice is that? At the moment, with it being winter, it's nice and hot for me, so. Ah, uh, delicious. And we're back. 
So over the last six hours, the pot has been boiling away very, very nicely over there. She's just peeping into the picture there. And um, I've turned it once, turned the meat once, and just spooned over some of the juices over the top. And apart from that, I have left it alone. And then over this side, which you can't see, I've actually got some vegetables extra vegetables on the go just because it's nice to have some freshness so there's some mixed vegetables i would have liked to have just straight peas but i didn't have any peas in the freezer so i just worked with what i've got which is frozen mixed veggies and i added some beans in there as well so what i'm going to do next is give you a couple of different options of how to serve this meal and you can go with whichever one works for you the best and I will be going with the smashed potato option. So without any further ado, let's get serving it up. Okay, and this is how she's looking after six hours of cooking. Oh, doesn't that look amazing? And yes, it's very, very hot. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take out these beautiful pieces of lamb shank and pop them on a plate to the side. Okay. Lovely. Now I'm going to take all of those lovely, lovely vegetables which have been sitting at the bottom and you could totally serve it up just like this. Just scoop them out of that lovely sauce. The other things you could put in there actually, could, you could put a little bit of pumpkin. That would have been really nice. It would have disintegrated um, during the cooking process, but it adds, adds a real lovely sweetness to the mix. You could have done um, like an ex, like not as many potatoes in the bottom of the cooker and added and, and just done some mashed potato proper mashed potato because that's always lovely too so there's our veggies don't they look great and now all i'm gonna do with those veggies is i'm just gonna smush them up like i said you could totally use the veg just like that but this is what i call mashed potato rather than mashed potato because of the skins being on it it adds a bit of uh, texture to the mash so that's why we call it smashed and everything is so juicy you don't need to add anything else to the mix at all lovely Something you'll get to learn about me, I'm not a tidy cook. <laughs> I'm not a tidy creator. I often make a lot of mess when I'm creating, but there we go. That looks really kind of gross, but at the same time, I can guarantee you it's gonna taste freaking delicious. So put that to the side right now. Let's come back to the sauce. So we can see it's still quite runny and I'd like to be able to use some of that sauce and just remember whatever sauce that you use, whether it be a barbecue based sauce, whether it be an Indian, Thai, Chinese, whatever brand of sauce that you like to, or flavour of sauce that you like to use, you'd still love to use the same sauce on top of your meat and vegetables after it's cooked. So let's add some potato flour in here and get that nice and thickened up so it can become more like a gravy, okay? So I have here one really massively heaped teaspoon or two teaspoons of potato flour. I pop that in there. I add a little bit of water and mix it up, okay? 
okay? And the reason why you do that before you add it to your sauces is so that it doesn't go all lumpy in the sauce. Because once you get lumps in your sauce, it's really, really, really hard to get out. So don't just think, oh, I'll skip that step and I won't add the water. Make sure you add the water, it's really important, okay? Then we can pop that in there. And potato flour is absolutely brilliant for thickening up things like this because it's almost instant. You don't really have to wait a long time for it to cook as such. Whereas if you add regular wheat flour, you have to wait a little while, a few minutes for it to cook properly. Even corn flour, you have to stir it around and see that's pretty much done now. It's almost instant. That's why I love potato flour. Now the potato flour that I got, I actually got it from the Asian groceries. So if you're ever wondering where you can get it from, the first time I ever got it was actually at the general supermarket. Um, and then when I went back to get more, it was all gone. And they didn't restock it. And I was like, oh no, what am I gonna do? And uh, then I happened to have been, I happened to visit a Asian groceries and I saw it there and I went oh my goodness yes fantastic so that's how I managed to get a hold of my old potato flour all right so that sauce is now done and now we'll just plate everything up there we go one beautiful lamb shank dinner and now everybody's favorite part the taste test Mmm. Oh wow. Now this isn't quite as tender as I would like. And the main reason for that is that I didn't cook it all day like I would normally. So I did say six hours, but you know what? If I was to cook that all day, like start it off at like nine o'clock in the morning and leave it cooking for like eight or nine hours, Oh my god, it would be falling off the bone. At the moment, it's still tender. The meat's actually quite tender, but it's not falling off the bone. And I love it when it gets to that falling off the bone stage, but that actually requires a few more hours of cooking, and I didn't have that today. The meat itself is still really, really tasty. It's still very tender, but it probably just needs like maybe a couple more hours cooking. But it's still fine to eat right now. So there we go. Yum, and a bit of test out those veggies. There we go, there's the veggies. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. All those spices from the tikka masala have come through, and it's just added just so much more depth of flavor. Oh my god, that's amazing. Mm. I'd sit down and just eat that whole bowl of veg to be quite honest. <laughs> but I'm a potato lover anyway, so there we go. You win some, you lose some. Today is still a winner, even though it has got a slight little fault in there, but it's still super, super delicious. As an extra a little added bonus today, I'm going to give you a quick recipe for corn silver side. Here we go. It's... This is the recipe that my granddad and I used when we were out fencing and we would put this on in the morning and by dinner time it was lovely and cooked so I'm just going to run that through with you really quickly now. It's very similar to the recipe I did for the shanks except I'm going to be putting it on first thing in the morning. Alright, here we go. Silver side, meat side, down. Bay leaves, two bay leaves. For an extra little bit of spice, some peppercorns. Two liters of cold water. Now you put that onto low and leave it for the rest of the day. If you decide that this version of the corn silver side is not flavorful enough, you can add things like put chicken stock or anything like that in there too, which is really tasty. 
cover that over and leave it for the rest of the day. And now we have the silver side. She's all cooked and ready to be sliced up. Let's have a look. Oh, feels good so far. Look at that. Beautiful. Cooked all the way through. Nice and tender and juicy. There we go. So quick and easy meal and you can have just a couple of slices per person. And then you can have it for cold meat sandwiches the next day. You can pop it into fry ups, you can pop it into all sorts of things. You can even make a little, use it as a base for a pie. Excellent variety of other options you can do with corn silver side after you've had it cooked. So we're off to enjoy this now with some yummy beef gravy. And I would just like to say thank you so much for watching. You are all beautiful and amazing and you are all incredible. And I wish for you to be encouraged and get out there, get creative, be a contribution to each other and be bold, be brave, be you my friends. And if you have a chance, I'd love it if you could hit that subscribe button and have a look over here for the next video or the last video that um, I have uploaded. And I wish you all the best with your day, your week, your month, even your next hour. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> and, let, and let them cook. Everybody, see you soon.